Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to give you some tips how you can improve the depth scanning in order for you to eventually get the best mixed reality experience on the Quest 3. Now in this video I'll be using Figmin XR, this is an app that lets kind of sandbox app that you can create different things but it has kind of a visualization that allows me to kind of showcase and explain to you uh, what you shouldn't do and what you should do in order to get the better, best mixed reality experience. So this is what you see here is basically the depth scanning mesh. Uh, when I scan my room, you can see all the different places that actually scanned previously. Now, when you are scanning, the very important thing, first of all, make sure uh, that the environment is well lit because the depth sensor work best in bright environments with plenty of contrast. So avoid scanning in dark or dimly lit rooms. When you are scanning the environment, make sure to move slowly and scan it from different angles. This ensures that, for example, you can scan it from areas that uh, you aren't looking directly and are not visible for the depth scanning camera, but also allow the depth scanning camera to make sure to capture some uh, object that might be small or thin that otherwise it might miss. Now, as you can see the faces of the mesh, you can see that the resolution of the depth scanning isn't high. This means the small object uh, might be missed or not scanned or scanned in a very inaccurate way. Now, when you start, make sure to scan everything. Also, again, the ceiling and also the, the walls and other areas. Uh, make sure to look at some areas several times to get a better accurate representation, mesh, mesh digital representation of those objects. Eventually that's it will tell you when it's enough and you can stop. But I recommend continue on again because as you can see here, some of the areas like underneath the table aren't scanned properly. And for example, uh, if you move objects, uh, make sure to put the object back at the place where you want to eventually be. Uh, because otherwise you put the chair in the middle of the room, it will be scanned there. But if you decide to make room and play a game, for example, you move it back, the mesh will still be there. Uh, whether the chair will actually be somewhere else. And this will lead to an inaccurate experience eventually. Now, as you can see, I'm also kind of, uh, kind of crouching and looking underneath the table in order to scan there is underneath the table. There are some things that we can do later on, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, where they can define objects. But as you can see, I wanted to make sure that uh, the depth scanning also get this area underneath the table. You can see that it actually missed the legs. Sometimes it gets it, but not very accurately because they are very slim. Also areas that are kind of uh, maybe dark or slim on the side of the closet. You can see that it doesn't really do this uh, in good way because I don't have a lot of options to kind of move around this corner to give it more uh, way to actually scan properly, but also because it's pretty dark there, there's not a lot of contrast that allows the depth scanning to do a good job. As you can see, there are some areas that I need to move around like near the suitcase, because otherwise if I don't change an angle, it won't actually get a good scan there. And also when it comes to tables, for example, you can see that this doesn't have texture and it, it can miss sometimes, it doesn't do it very accurately. If you have good contrast and texture surface, it will pick it up much better. Same goes, by the way, to dark areas, unless there's some contrast, it will capture it, but you can see it really doesn't really capture the edges of the table. It does a good job because there are cables there and some other objects, this is why it's scanned it properly, but you see that the edges where they are dark and there's no texture there, it just doesn't scan it because it's black because there's not, not enough contrast, of course. But we're going to solve this when it comes to, um, again, uh, uh, adding objects, furniture. We're going to do this in a moment. So again, this is another area on the side which I wanted to scan. Maybe I'm going to throw a ball there. I want it to really be there. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is regarding reflected surfaces, which is a problem because, again, depth scanning won't be able to accurately capture a reflected surface. And you can see it right here. There's a glass cover kind of uh, on top of this shelf that I'm going to show you in a moment and you can see that it just capture what's underneath it doesn't really do a good job uh, understanding that there's a, actually a surface a glass surface on top of it but of course you can temporarily do something like put an object there or maybe cover it with a cardboard uh, even at least temporarily just for the scan again something that is cumbersome eventually the technology will improve but again as you can see I just put it there so it will actually capture the surface correctly and then I can remove it. But if you do something like that and decide to do it, remove it after you finish the scan. 
After you finish the scan, you're going to also see that uh, the algorithm will eventually detect the walls of your room. It does a very good job in doing it. But uh, if you see that it's not really perfect or it didn't get it properly, again, this is a very simple room, a square room, it's very easy to detect. But some rooms, of course, will have multiple walls and kind of a more uh, unique structure that it might not be um, a good representation of your uh, space. So you can actually add more walls or adjust the corner of the walls in order to make sure that it truly represents the edges of your room, the structure of your room, the walls. This is also tells the app where the ceiling is. And basically, if you can move it around, I don't need to, it was actually accurate, I'm just showing you that you can actually grab it and change it. And once you're happy with the result, you can approve it. Keep in mind, again, for some apps, uh, very short depth scanning will be enough and you don't even need to do any def defining uh, things. Some have just used the walls, for example, or the ceiling, other like sandbox games, you really want to have very uh, in-depth scanning because again, this is just a lead for the experience itself in this reality to become better. Or let's say more accurate, especially when interacting with physics. So you see that I can actually define square options with the furniture, like the table there. And there's also a way to define doors and windows. Uh, this is basically something that developers can use because once you define it, they know developers where those specific objects are located and they can actually do some kind of interaction with them. But again, this is app specific. One of the problems when you design a table, I mean, one of the pluses is that you get a very straight definition of the table, right? The flat surface, the edges, great. Problem is that uh, the inside part of it is kind of a blocked. And I'm going to show you the way actually to, to overcome this is maybe try to define just the uh, right area, left area of the table and not make it until the top. Uh, and then on top of you just create a surface that attached to those um, uh, right and left blocks that you actually made. You can actually create a top part only because you need first to create something, uh, a surface that attached to the floor and then you have the surface and then on top of the surface, you create something else. For example, here I created a table and then I could define the box on top of it. If, for example, I define the table, you can see squarish, but again, if I throw a ball, a virtual ball underneath it, it will just get stuck. It won't actually appear underneath it. You can also define uh, windows. The way to define window is just point into the wall and it will actually know this is either kind of a picture of a window or a door. Here I'm defining a door. So regarding what I told you before, for example, if you really want to make sure that the space underneath the table is uh, not meshed, you can create uh, something that, uh, well, you need to create it not until the top, maybe just below it. I did it until the top, which is not good. But then you can actually create a surface uh, that covers the entire top of the table. But again, you need to create it from on top of the uh uh, this 3D model that you already created, and then you can just stretch it. But again, I didn't do a good job in terms of accuracy, but well, you get the point. So again, you're not restricted to create really something big. You can really create small portion with this square definement of uh, objects, and then create something that defines the object itself, rather than just going entire square over everything, like you can see here. Now there's a space underneath, which uh, actually is empty. There's no mesh there, and object can be appear underneath, occluded underneath. Now the cool thing with the Figmin app, uh, Figmin XR, it allows you to actually showcase uh, the surfaces and the mesh. The mesh is kind of a, the, all this bubbly, not super accurate thing that you see there. And basically objects will be uh, intersected and occluded based on uh, the mesh, based of course, both on the walls to define, the objects to define, and the mesh uh, that was done using the depth scanning. So now we're going to demonstrate it. The app actually allows me to use only the surfaces, mesh or not at all. So it allows me to demonstrate. So this is just the mesh. And you can see that if I put the ball there, you can see it's not perfect because this is just the mesh. You can see that part of it is not straight line. All right, so again, it's going to affect, of course, the appearance or occlusion of the object relative to the physical surface. So if I turn it off, you can actually see that if I put it near the table, you can see that it's not really perfect there. 
because the mesh you can see actually the structure of the mesh if you move a virtual content underneath the physical one where the mesh is actually representing a structure now remember the table you see that i defined i can't really put the boulder it's just stuck against the wall but whether here when i define it differently you can see that it can appear occluded underneath it because i didn't define it as a table i created different objects uh, that uh, define the table itself this is the mesh by the way that actually scanned the laptop there so it's pretty accurate as you can see just drop it there and pretty accurate you can actually see now the mesh structure why it's actually occluding and why it actually falls on the laptop because the depth scanning actually scanned the entire area there Also remember with the chair, I told you that some object that you might move, make sure they stand in the same place. I'm gonna show this in a moment. This is on top of the, this is, we defined it as a box, remember? So it just, uh, it shows the mesh by the way, but there's actually a box area there as well. The closet should have been uh, scanned for more square area. I didn't do that, but I recommend doing so if you have a closet, square one. It's pretty accurate, right? right? Now remember the part where there was uh, uh, glass, remember? Uh, I'm going to show you. So again, now it's actually working. If I scan it with the glass, it actually fall inside because, I mean, kind of fall inside in quotation because uh, there wasn't a surface there. But because I put the cardboard there, there it's actually, yeah, now meshed it properly and it was able to prevent the virtual ball from actually appearing like it's falling. You see, this is the mesh. So you can see that it just scanned it properly. Uh, and this is why it works. This is why I recommend some things if you want them to be scanned properly and you have reflected surfaces, preferably not having, but if you already have, uh, you can define it. You can see even the chair I told you that don't, I mean, try to put some object that you dynamically sometimes remove Stem, make them sure they stay in place and then scan them uh, because again otherwise they won't actually be there for the I mean the mesh won't actually scan them there and you won't actually see the ball occluding where the chair was actually located in the first place so again overall scan it slowly try to cover all the different angles even crouch a bit scan underneath uh, areas try to find uh, areas that uh, you know maybe kind of a smaller that you need to be to crouch and check them from different angles to get them right and also make sure again that the room is very well lit so we get very good contrast uh, don't use reflecting surfaces unless again it's really necessary if there is a reflected surface you can just do put some texture or cover in order to uh, scan it properly scan for multiple angles scan it uh, slowly and evenly and one last thing by the way make sure to clean the cameras uh, yeah, cover there's this kind of a glass in front of the cameras make sure it's clean if it's not dirty because it can lead to some of course now if you get the quest train it's you but again some things can get dirt and dust or whatever make sure to clean it so if you get a good uh, optical performance so you won't encounter any issues and also by the way update to the latest uh, software uh, I mean update the quest software and uh, again if you find any issues that are well issues you can report it of course to meta so they can fix it thanks for watching everybody give a like if you find this one useful i'll see you in the next guide cheers